in this video we're going to be going through night photography and I'm going to just show you some examples and talk about the real key elements to getting great night photographs. Now the first key element is using slow shutter speeds. So people think okay it's night time not enough light so they automatically think okay you're going to have to put the sensitivity of your sensor up, the ISO. But as you know from the the ISO video from the blue membership area you know that the higher that number the more grain you're going to get in your image. So a better way to capture more light at night is to leave the shutter open for longer. So that collects more light and then you can actually use a lower ISO and not get that same grain. So you can use ISOs from like 100 to 320 which will give you very low grain in your images and collect enough light using that longer shutter speed. So I'm here at the Seattle Center near the Space Needle and we've got some really cool arches up here that I just want to get a shot of with a wide angle lens because that's great for capturing more of your scene. And I'm just going to have it so I've got a little bit of water in the foreground. We've got some fountains going down the bottom there so there's some movement on the water. And I'm going to try to get a wide shot with these really cool arches at the top and so one thing about night photography it is a bit of trial and error so you can actually use smaller apertures because you want a greater depth of field but then you have to open that shutter speed to compensate so in other words you've got a smaller aperture so you're not letting much light in but you're getting a nice broad depth of field a lot of things in focus and then you really want to have a longer shutter to be able to add enough light and a lot of the times when you're at night you can't necessarily get a good reading with your meter either because some of the bright objects are going to give you a reading that makes your picture too dark overall. With night photos it, it doesn't matter if the bright light sources blow out because you actually want to blow them out a bit so that you get more of the other lighting, ambient lighting in your scene. If you meter it just for the brightest light sources what you're going to get is an image with bright light sources and pretty much black everywhere else so you have to blow those out a little sometimes. So let's just set up this test shot and see how we go. Now another tip for night photos is because you're using a really long shutter speed you want to at least use a remote or use that self timer method so that when you take the photograph you're not pushing on the camera. So, I, in this case, I'm just going to use the self timer set to 10 seconds. Another thing with night photos is the autofocus sometimes has trouble locking on. So you, it's better to set the focus fairly far, like closer to infinity, and then have a really narrow aperture to really broaden that depth of field. So I'm going to set it on... I'm actually going to set it on manual because I actually want to set the shutter speed as long as I want with a really narrow aperture and I'm not I don't want the camera to try and meter it I want to actually do some tests myself to get the picture I want so, so I'm going to set it to f16 so that's quite a narrow aperture so I'm going to get a really broad depth of field I'm going to use an ISO of 320 and so f Aperture f16 and we're going to set it to So I'm going to underexpose it by one stop just to see if it gives us the right effect here So now we get on our Drive mode Okay So in the second shot I decided to use a much slower shutter speed of 15 seconds and I did this by lowering the ISO to 100 and closing down the aperture to f22 so that 
created a much slower shutter speed and allowed me to soften that water and but the rest of the image is still really nice and sharp because of that really broad depth of field. Okay, I'm going to take some shots of the famous Space Needle in Seattle now and I'm going to shut down the aperture as small as it can go so f22 and I'm going to have a relatively low ISO of 320 and take about a 15 second long exposure and see how we go with that so I'm using that 10 second self timer here we go now it's taking the shot so it's quite a long shot we're looking at 15 seconds exposure and then once it closes we'll get a quick preview on the LCD of how that came out and that's like really one of the benefits of there we go okay that's looking quite good we're getting some of that ambient sort of pink light in the sky that's caused from a lot of the city lights bouncing off the clouds and I'll try a couple more exposures and we'll see how those come out set up another shot here with the Pacific Science Center in the background and we've got some really bright lights and I'll show you what I was talking about about blowing out some of those lights and how that's not a problem for the picture Okay, one of the interesting things about that photograph, we had a, a couple, we had a couple walk through the scene while I was taking the photo. One thing you notice if you have a really long shutter speed, the amount of light coming off people walking through if they're moving, not really enough to give a, a real solid image in your frame and quite often they'll be totally invisible. So it's kind of a cool way of, of making it so that you can get a scene, a night scene where there's lots of people and you can actually make it so they practically blur out. So kind of a neat trick. Okay, so I'm just going to take a few more shots around here and just to give you some more examples of night shots. And I'll get one with traffic too so you can see that classic car light lines effect with the long exposure. <laughs> Okay, I have a couple of little suburban night scenes here with the moon glow through the clouds and these are actually taken over 30 second exposure so a really long exposure and f14 aperture so still a pretty good depth of field there broad depth of field now one thing I want to show you with these shots is the color balance for this was around four and a half thousand Kelvin now you can get some really cool effects if you play around with the white balance with night shots like in this case if I pull down the Kelvin levels in the computer all the way down to 2000 you get a really nice cool blue look with both these images so you can really play with night photos white balance just to give you the kind of look that you want a real favorite for nighttime photographs is fireworks and with this series I've used a aperture of 7.1 to give us reasonable depth of field and an ISO 400 so that allows us to have a little bit of the blue sky in the background although the sun is set already you're still getting a little bit of that ambient light and these ones are taken at between 2 seconds and 8 seconds so you can see with some of these you can do that drawing with light effectively, painting with light using in this case the little sparklers that the kids run around with. 
So real colourful photographs with fireworks by leaving that shutter open to capture the moments. One trick that people use for taking photographs of a lot of fireworks going off in the sky too is you use a lens cap or a black object and you put it in front of the lens so you open your shutter and you put it in front of the lens and then you just move it out the way when you expect a firework to go off and then you can block it and wait for a few more rockets to go off in the air and then move the object out the way again to expose a little bit more so that way you can accumulate a bunch of fireworks in the same frame effectively doing a multiple exposure